It's such a beautiful day to be outside in the woods. Oh my God. Are you serious? A plane? All right, guys, welcome back to another smartphone gimbal review. You are probably asking yourself if you even need a smartphone gimbal when using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, I'm going to be straightforward with you. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has great sensorship stabilization. You can create some smooth looking handheld shots with it, but when it comes to longer complex movements, nothing beats a good gimbal. It not only makes it very easy to get these creative shots, but each gimbal comes with their own unique features. And my job, you know my job, man, is to help you find the right one. I believe that every smartphone filmmaker should have a gimbal for their phone since they are small, portable, and inexpensive compared to larger gimbals. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the DJI OM5 and show you how to set it up with the iPhone 13 Pro Max to get you started shooting great looking videos. Specifically, I will give you a quick overview of the gimbal, talk about the build and design, show you how to mount and balance the gimbal, introduce you to the basic button functions, shooting and operating modes. I'm also gonna walk you through the DJI MIMO app and give you the best camera settings for shooting high quality video. Talk about some of the specific features the app offers and the behind the scenes of how I use the gimbal in action. And finally, the price and my final thoughts to it. No matter if you're a beginner and never held a gimbal before in your life or just want to learn everything there is to the DJI OM4, then you have come to the right place as I will train you to wield your gimbal like a sword master. Holy shit. Keep in mind that there will be a timestamp below if you want to skip or go back to a particular part in the video. With that said, let's get started. So we're going to start with the quick overview of the DJI OM5. On the top, you have the famous magnetic phone clamp, which I personally love. To the side, you have an M3 0.5 screw hole to add counterweights when using add-on lenses. You have the pan, tilt, and roll motor for all three axis stabilization. A built-in extension rod. And looking at the controls, you have a joystick, a shutter record button, a switch button. Below is the battery indicator, which also functions as a system status indicator. To the left, you have the M button the zoom slider. On the opposite side, you have the USB-C charging port. On the grip, you have the trigger button. And to the very bottom, a one quarter screw hole to mount the included tripod. As you can see, the buttons are well placed, allowing you to use the controls with one hand. So let's move on to the build and design. There have been some significant improvements compared to its predecessor, the DJI OM4. I like how they kept the magnetic clamp that allows for a quick setup. It is 100 grams lighter and about 30% smaller when folding the OM5 for easier storage. When folding the gimbal, you will have to remove the magnetic clamp, but I have it attached on my phone most of the time time anyways. So the gimbal is strong enough and has a max payload of up to 290 grams. It can easily handle the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which weighs around 240 grams. The biggest change we see is the built-in extension rod that works like a selfie stick. It extends as far as 21.5 centimeters, which is a good distance for those that want to vlog and have more in the frame, but also for getting unique shots, which we will be looking at later. The included tripod is great to place it on a flat surface to record timeline. The gimbal feels high quality and is very well built. I do like the round shape of the grip, which kind of reminds me of the OM5 can operate up to six hours under ideal conditions with the gimbal fully balanced. Now let me show you how to mount and balance your phone with the OM5. To unfold the gimbal, rotate the pan and tilt axis clockwise as indicated to unlock it. Then unfold the gimbal as shown. Attach the magnetic phone clamp in the center of the phone. Make sure that the camera mark is pointed towards the camera of your phone. To attach your phone with the DJI OM5, align the marks on the phone clamp and the mounting plate. So the magnets will hold the phone and the gimbal together. It's super strong, so you don't have to worry about your phone falling off the gimbal. To power the gimbal, just press hold the M button and you're ready to rumble, my friend. To operate like a pro, you should learn the basic button functions of your gimbal. Most of the gimbals work similarly. The DJI OM5 just has a few buttons, which makes it easy to use. Let's look at what the M button does. When the gimbal is turned off, you can check the battery level by pressing the M button once. To power the gimbal, press hold the M button. 
When the gimbal is on, you can press the M button once to switch between the photo or video mode in the DJI MIMO app. You can put your gimbal into standby mode by pressing the M button twice. This way you can save battery and to exit this mode, just press any other button. To start and stop recording, press the shutter record button once. This also works with the native camera app and Filmic Pro. Pressing the switch button once will change between the front and back camera when using the DJI MIMO app. Pressing the switch button twice will switch the phone between landscape and portrait mode. So this also works regardless of what camera app you are using. By the way, you can also adjust the phone by hand if needed, which I find super awesome. Now you can use the joystick to move and control the direction of the camera. The zoom slider can be used to obviously zoom in and out, but this only works when using the DJI MIMO app. When pressing the trigger button once, you can activate or stop active track, which also requires the DJI MIMO app. Pressing the trigger button twice will recenter the gimbal. All right, we made it till here let's continue so when shooting videos with your gimbal it can be helpful to know the different shooting modes and operating modes to get the shots you need a lot of camera moves can be done handheld but it takes a lot of practice and you are more likely to have camera shakes in your video you don't want that especially when the camera movement is complex with the gimbal it makes it much easier because you can use these modes and shoot more creatively so first we have the follow and fpv mode by pressing the m button four times you can switch between fpv and follow mode by default when turning the om5 on it is set to follow mode i use this mode most of the time because that allows me to create smooth pan and tilt shots that look natural in my video when switching to fpv all motors are unlocked and you can use this mode to record accurately filled moments. Then there is the tilt lock which only the pan axis follows. This is great for recording forward or backward motion where the subject is walking for example ensuring that the composition stays the same. Then to enter all lock mode press hold the trigger button. In this mode the gimbal will not follow your hand movement. This mode is perfect for maintaining a straight shot while walking forward or backward. Next is sport mode. Pressing the trigger button twice and holding it will enable it. You will notice that the follow speed of the gimbal increases which is great for capturing quick movement finally we have the spin shot where you can use the joystick to rotate the phone to create an inception effect i made a dedicated video about it using the om4 but it will also work with the om5 if you want to check it out make sure to head over to this link all right guys let's move on to the operating modes here i will show you the different techniques and how you can use the gimbal for your creative shots so there is the upright mode which you will be using most of the time to create your camera movements if you want to learn more about camera movements, I also have a video on that, which you can check out up here. Then you can enter under slung mode by placing the gimbal upside down. You will notice that the phone rotates so that the motors don't block the frame. This mode is great to shoot from a lower angle. Then by simply rotating the gimbal 90 degree, you will enter side grip mode, which can be useful for creating a slide shot. Last, you can use the built-in extension rod and adjust the angle to get into low position mode, which you can also use to shoot from a lower angle. So these were the four main operating modes. Try to be creative when using these modes as there are many camera movements you can do with it. So if you want to access all of DJI OM 5's feature, then it's best to use the DJI MIMO app. As I say in all my videos, I personally like to use the native or filmic pro app as I'm most familiar with these and I don't necessarily need those features features. Now make sure to download the DJI MIMO app and have Bluetooth enabled so that you can connect the gimbal with your phone. Make sure to use the DJI MIMO app to update the gimbal to its latest firmware. All right, so let's open up the DJI MIMO app and it's going to automatically connect uh, with the app. So this is the interface of the DJI MIMO app. On the top left hand corner, you can head back to the home to select your device, just hit that camera icon. And right now everything is set to auto, but if you wanna have full control over your camera, it's best to use the manual settings. So instead of auto, you're gonna press the M button and in here you can dial uh, your camera settings. So ISO, I usually keep uh, as low as possible at 100. And when I set it that way, uh, it's gonna be locked. So no changes occur uh, during the shoot. And I'm gonna set my shutter speed double my frame rate. So because I know I'm gonna shoot 4K uh, 60 frames per second, I'm gonna set it to one over 20. This way I will have that natural motion blur. 
Now, if you're filming in bright conditions, then you obviously uh, have to um, crank up the shutter speed or use an ND filter to maintain that um, natural motion blur. Then you have exposure value. Um, we're gonna leave it how it is. Then below you have your uh, resolution and frame rate. So I'm gonna set it to 4K and the frame rate is 60 frames per second. And 4K just has more detail and 60 frames per second allows me to slow the footage down later. Now below you have some beauty filter options. I personally don't use this uh, feature. And then the three dots at the bottom left in here you have additional settings so you can enable flash if you want to. Um, the white balance very important. Uh, I don't recommend setting to auto otherwise your colors will shift during the shoot. So I prefer to set my white balance using the presets or custom so right now it's set to 4800 kelvin which is about right then below we have additional gimbal settings uh, i always have this gimbal set to follow mode but if you want to you can change the different gimbal modes you also have the follow speed i keep that in medium i find it works for me really good then if you need to calibrate your gimbal just hit the calibrate button also the horizontal gimbal adjustment if you find uh, the gimbal is not leveled you can adjust it manually in the settings uh, but I would always first check if you balanced your gimbal correctly so I'm going to adjust it to make it horizontal it's a little bit off because my uh, tripod <laughs> is not leveled then you can also use the M button to switch between photo and video mode now I personally like to use the M button uh, to open up the quick menu. This way I can head back to the DJI MIMO app, uh, quickly select my video shooting mode, and then use the native camera app or Filmic Pro to shoot in that mode. If I press M for example, I'm now in the quick uh, menu and I can quickly change between these uh, gimbal modes. Now the control speed I set to slow. Uh, especially when using the spin shot, I don't want it to spin it quick. This way the camera will move more smoothly, which is important when creating a smooth camera movements. So to the very right, you have different shooting modes. You got video, photo, panoramic. You got also dynamic zoom, which allows you to create that vertigo effect. Now in the time-lapse mode, you can also create a moving time-lapse if you want to. Hyperlapse is also a great feature that I like to use, especially with the tracking uh, feature. This way I can track an object and just move the gimbal and the gimbal will keep that object centered. Now you also have story mode, which are video templates, which will help you uh, make the video. So all you have to do is follow the instruction and to the upper left, you have a video tutorial that you can follow and it will sort of create the video for you. Now to the upper right, you have different uh, symbols indicating the battery life of the gimbal and of the phone and also the current shooting mode you're in. Top right, you can switch between the front and selfie camera, which is great. So let me show you how to use gesture control. I'm gonna select the hand icon, enable it. And I'm also gonna select follow shoot. And this will also activate the uh, tracking feature. So when I do the peace sign, it's gonna track my face and start recording, which is great for vloggers. And when I put my hands up, it's gonna stop the recording. So this is pretty cool. Now you can also activate uh, smart tracking by pressing the trigger button once and it will detect my face and follow it wherever I go. And it does a pretty good job at doing it. Now what you also could do is use your fingers to track an object or a person. So as you can see by drawing a line on my face, it detects me and follows me. Now, if you don't wanna use the manual controls, you can also go with auto, but I suggest you lock your exposure. And to do that, you can just tap hold on the screen. As you can see, a box appears with the lock sign, which means the exposure is locked. And I can also drag down with my fingers to lower the exposure, which I recommend doing because um, the iPhone tends to uh, overexpose uh, the image most of the time. 
So the gimbal is priced at $170, which is one of the pricier gimbals, but considering the built-in extension pole, the magnetic clamp system, and the overall performance makes it worth purchasing. Now, vloggers will like this gimbal just because you have more range when extending the pole. This way you will fit more into the frame and combining it with the tracking feature on the DJI Mimo app makes it convenient to vlog. And with the extension pole, you also have more reach and can be more creative when you're shooting. Now, I personally enjoyed using the DJI OM5, and this is certainly a gimbal that I will bring with me along the way. So guys, let me know what you think of the DJI OM5. Is that the gimbal you have been waiting for? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe as this will help the both of us. Now, if you're not part of the private smartphone filmmaking group, make sure to join as you can share your work with others and get feedback. Now, before I end this video, I never really had the chance to uh, thank you as a loyal subscriber. You may have noticed that we have reached 100,000 subscribers, guys, and I'm just blown away by it. Ah, and it truly feels amazing. I'm actually planning a special video, not sure when, but uh, hopefully soon. Now, by the time this video is online, I'm probably on vacation for two weeks. Now, I will be taking a break, which means I won't be uploading a video next week. <gasps> Oh my God, but I think it's important. This way I can refill my creative energy again and provide you guys with valuable content again. Once again, folks, I'll keep you updated. Stay safe. And by the way, uh, I'll be leaving for Tenerife. It's gonna be awesome. So you guys take care and I will see you the next time.